It's been four years since Egyptians took to the streets to oust Hosni Mubarak in a bloody revolution that quickly turned into a military coup. And what followed has been a country in utter turmoil. Over the weekend, 17 protesters died at the hands of security forces, including 34-year-old mother Shaima El Sabag, who was holding a wreath of flowers before being shelled to death. Joining me now to discuss the state of Egypt today, Dina Darwish, Egyptian activist and physician, and Ahmed Fathi, Egyptian-American journalist. Thank you so much, both of you, for coming on today. Uh, Dina, I want to start with you, of course. Uh, these people tragically lost their lives protesting on the eve of the revolution. Describe the dynamics right now on the ground and why we're seeing such a heavy-handed response. Okay, it's the, the 2011 Egyptian revolution is basically dead and buried. Uh, the revolutionaries are in jail. The uh, former um, regime officials, the corrupt officials, were freed. And um, including uh, the sons of Mubarak this morning were freed. And to add insult to injury, uh, the Egyptian treasury has to return $1 billion of uh, frozen assets from the family frozen assets as a result of their acquittals. So it's a slap on the face uh, for uh, Egyptian revolutionaries, and that's mm -hmm. why they're returning to the streets. Mm -hmm. And Ahmed, talk about what life is like right now. I mean, for the average Egyptian, do they have running water, electricity? I mean, what, what is the employment rate like? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the unemployment uh, statistics uh, stands at 13.2%. However, in the uh, university graduates and postgraduates, it stands at staggering 22 uh, percent. The future doesn't really have much hope for the average Egyptian. The youth, who are the majority of the population of Egypt, as my friend Dina just mentioned, uh, has been insulted uh, over and over. The revolution uh, at this stage is at a critical mass. I don't agree 100% that the revolution has died and buried. There is still waves uh, coming. Uh, we have seen, what we see now in Egypt is, in a nutshell, a, a national uh, state of pandering by everybody. Uh, you look into the religious establishment, the uh, Al-Azhar, the Coptic Orthodox uh, Pope, uh, Tawadros, who, who made uh, a, a, a very insulting statement even for me as a Muslim. He said, when I saw uh, President Sisi coming into the cathedral, I felt as if Jesus is coming into the cathedral. <laughs> uh, the, the, the police uh, force uh, is, is, a, is, is a bunch of, uh, of uh, official killers. Uh, the lady, uh, the mother, yeah. who died just two days ago, she was shot in the back uh, with, with, with a shotgun. It's insane. Uh, I mean, yeah, those photos are just horrifying. I mean, and she was a, she was a leftist leader there. Yes, uh, Dina, I wanted yes. you to talk exactly. about the role that she, leftists have in the yes. political landscape and also uh, women. Uh, she uh, is a member of the, uh, uh, of the Socialist Population Alliance Party. She was going to place flowers on the... Uh, the, mem the memorial in Tahrir Square, which was, by the way, cordoned off by the police to, uh, uh, to prevent demonstrations. Mm -hmm. So, in effect, it's a police state uh, uh, basically ruled by decree. There is no parliament. There is no, uh, 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 you know, it's only one general, Abdel Fattah Sisi, who has absolute power, and his military establishment, the police ruling the country, also the corrupt judiciary, which is playing a very, very important role. They are aligning themselves with the old regime. Uh, in addition to that, there is uh, also the intelligence services uh, ruling the country. It's a total police state. And on top of that, there are the uh, corrupt crony business community who are aligning themselves uh, with, the, with this police state in order to protect their economic interests. Uh, Ahmed, uh, I, I think the world was stunned after um, Sisi's regime sentenced hundreds of Brotherhood supporters to death, of course, um, later, you know, commuted those, those sentences to life sentences in prison. But still, I mean, there's hundreds of people sitting in prison facing life sentences. Why do you think there's more of an outcry from the international community about that? And these 17 protesters who were killed, I haven't seen anyone really talk about what's going on. The 17 protesters, nobody will talk about. Uh, there is even an incitement in the media. A famous uh, talk show uh, host uh, went on the air and uh, said, that I wish that there was 400 uh, of them killed. A, a, a so-called uh, liberal thinkers, uh, thinker uh, claimed, oh, I want uh, more, uh, more killing of those people. It's, it's, it's really a farce because the, what the regime is, is promoting is that uh, those who are demonstrating are Muslim Brotherhood. Those who are killed are Muslim Brotherhood. 
And those who, are, who kill them are Muslim Brotherhood. So what the police is doing in all of this? Are they just uh, uh, absent uh, uh, viewers or silent viewers? Are the Muslim Brotherhoods who commit all of these atrocious crimes uh, wearing the ring of invisibility? Uh, nobody knows. It's silly and they treat the people because they can do that because they have 45% of the Egyptian population are completely illiterate. Add mm -hmm. to that, more than 95% of the people have zero political background. They have no political knowledge. The state of the culture and the intellectual uh, niveau uh, of the population is uh, below mediocre. So we cannot really expect anything to happen. The young people who are paying the price, the peaceful demonstrators who are carrying flowers, they are shot. And then you come and you hear other stories that they show, uh, oh, there, we found a, a, a possible bomb in one of the malls. If you go to Cairo or Alexandria or any place in Egypt, security in public places is at its uh, top, top, top. You, you cannot right. go with a bag without being inspected. So how come every time you found a bomb in these places, that means the security apparatus is non-existent or it is a fabricated stories in a leak uh, made uh, uh, through the, the manager of the office uh, of Field Marshal Sisi when he was uh, uh, Minister of Defense. Uh, it shows how they view the media. People who say, oh, tell the boys. And, uh, and, uh, and yeah. I'm uh, hyphenating the, the, word, the really boys. I wanted to jump in really quickly, because speaking of the media here, I mean, someone was asking State, State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki, they were saying, you know, what do you think about Mubarak being kind of immunized, you know, acquitted, and, and now his sons are being released. And, you know, she actually just said, we believe upholding impartial standards of accountability will advance the political consensus on which Egypt's long-term stability depends. Absolutely saying nothing there, just kind of an empty statement right there. Then she was caught in an embarrassing hot mic moment where she admitted it was total BS. I mean, Dina, why doesn't the U.S. have a clear stance on the makeup of okay, the current the, Egyptian the, regime? Because the U.S. cares about its geostrategic interests in the region. I, I actually believe that the U.S. is not happy with the current situation because it's unstable. The U.S. would rather, the U.S. establishment running this country would rather work with a more stable situation. They know it's a ticking time bomb. As a matter of fact, uh, there are reports from the government that up to 75% of people between the age of 18 and 30 are unemployed. Uh, and, and as far as the, the death numbers, it's actually the Ministry of Health is reporting 23 dead, 97 injured. There are 150 people uh, arrested, protesters arrested, in addition to 516 uh, members of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, so, and, and of course, there are 40,000 political prisoners in jail right now. So they, but, but the U.S., I would like to point out that mm -hmm. the EU, the U.N., the European Parliament, and the U.S. condemn the anti-protest law in Egypt. But of course, the geostrategic interests uh, take precedent always in the U.S. Uh, 45 left. Ahmed, uh, you know, I know that you're opposed to, to both Sisi and the Muslim Brotherhood. What other options do Egyptians have politically, 45? We need a transitional period. We need a five-member presidential council to take the country further. We need to have a, a proper a procedure. We need to, have, to open the political process. Since the, the revolution four years ago, the political process has not been open. It's been fabricated, manufactured, and tailored to please the, the best dictator in the land that we have in Egypt. Uh, and this, 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 is, this is the sad reality we face. One more, one more statement, okay. go. Despite the sad news coming from Egypt, I would like to congratulate Greece on the Syriza win. Yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dina Darwish, Ahmed Fati. Really appreciate you guys coming on. Thank you.